Mari, was an ancient Semitic city in Syria. Its remains constitute a tell located 11 kilometers northwest of Abu Kamal on the Euphrates River western bank, some 120 kilometers southeast of Deir Ezzedor. It flourished as a trade center and hegemonic state between 2900 BC and 1759 BC, as a purposely built city. The existence of Mari was related to its position in the middle of the Euphrates trade routes. This position made it an intermediary between Sumer in the south and the Levant in the west. Mari was first abandoned in the middle of the 26th century BC but was rebuilt and became the capital of a hegemonic East Semitic state before 2500 BC. This second Mari engaged in a long war with its rival Ebla, and is known for its strong affinity with the Sumerian culture. It was destroyed in the 23rd century BC by the Akkadians who allowed the city to be rebuilt and appointed a military governor bearing the title of Shakanaku. The governors later became independent with the rapid disintegration of the Akkadian Empire and rebuilt the city as a regional center in the middle, Euphrates Valley. The Shakanakas ruled Mari until the second half of the 19th century BC when the dynasty collapsed for unknown reasons. A short time after the Shakanaku collapse, Mari became the capital of the Amorite Lim dynasty. The Amorite Mari was short-lived as it was annexed by Babylonia in c. 1761 BC, but the city survived as a small settlement under the rule of the Babylonians in the Assyrians before being abandoned and forgotten during the Hellenistic period. The Mariots worshipped both Semitic and Sumerian deities and established their city as a center of old trade. However, although the pre-Amorite periods were characterized by heavy Sumerian cultural influence, Mari was not a city of Sumerian immigrants but rather a Semitic-speaking nation that used a dialect similar to Eblate. The Amorites were West Semites who began to settle the area before the 21st century BC, by the Lim Dynasty's era. They became the dominant population in the Fertile Crescent. Mari's discovery in 1933 provided an important insight into the geopolitical map of ancient Mesopotamia and Syria. Due to the discovery of more than 25,000 tablets that contained important information about the administration of state during the second millennium, BC and the nature of diplomatic relations between the political entities in the region, they also revealed the wide trading networks of the 18th century BC, which connected areas as far as Afghanistan in southern Asia and Crete in the Mediterranean region. History the name of the city can be traced to Mare, an ancient storm deity of northern Mesopotamia and Syria who was considered the patron deity of the city. Georges Dossin noted that the name of the city was spelled identically like the name of the storm god and concluded that Mari was named after him. The first kingdom, Mari, is not considered a small settlement that later grew but rather a new city that was purposely founded during the Mesopotamian early dynastic period I.C. 2900 BC, to control the waterways of the Euphrates trade routes that connect the Levant with the Sumerian south. The city was built about 1 to 2 kilometers away from the Euphrates River to protect it from floods and was connected to the river by an artificial canal that was between 7 and 10 kilometers long depending on which old meander it used to be attached with, which is hard to identify today. The city is difficult to excavate, as it is buried deep under the later layers of habitation. A defensive system against floods, composed of a circular embankment was unearthed. In addition to a circular 6.7 meters thick internal rampart to protect the city from enemies, an area of 300 meters long filled with gardens and craftsmen quarters, separated the outer embankment from the inner rampart which had a height of 8 to 10 meters and was strengthened by defensive towers. Other findings includes one of the city gates, a street beginning at the center and ending at the gate, in addition to residential houses. Mari had a central mound, however no temple or palaces have been unearthed. 
although a large building that seemed to have been an administrative one was unearthed. This building had stone foundations and dimensions of, with rooms up to 12 meters long and 6 meters wide. The city was abandoned at the end of the early dynastic period 2 c. 2550 BC for unknown reasons. The Second Kingdom around the beginning of the early dynastic period 3, Mari was rebuilt and populated again. The new city kept many of the first city exterior features, including the internal rampart and gate. Also kept, the outer circular embankment measuring 1.9 kilometers in diameter, which was topped by a wall that is 2 meters thick, suitable for the protection of archers. However, the internal structure was completely changed. The city was carefully planned. First to be built were the streets that descends from the elevated center into the gates, assuring the drainage of rainwater. At the heart of the city, a royal palace was built which also served as a temple. The first two levels were excavated. The findings include a temple named Ensintasakra, which was the largest in the city but it is unknown for whom it was dedicated. Also unearthed, a pillared throne room and a hall that have three double wood pillars leading to the temple. Six more temples were discovered in the city, including the temple called the Massif Rouge, and temples dedicated for Ninis Aza, Ishtarit, Ishtar, Ninhursag and Shamash. All the temples were located in the center of the city except for the Ishtar Temple. The area between the Ensinta Sacre and the Massif Rouge is considered the administrative center of the High Priest. The Second Kingdom appears to be a powerful and prosperous political center. Kings held the title of Lugal, and many are attested in the city. But the most important source is the letter of King Enadagon c. 2350 BC, which was sent to Urkab Dhamu of Ebla, and in it, the Marriott king mentions his predecessors and the military achievements. However, the reading of this letter is still problematic and many interpretations have been presented by scholars. Mari Eblawar, the earliest attested king in the letter of Enadagan is Ansud, who is mentioned as attacking Ebla, the traditional rival of Mari with whom it had a long war, and conquering many of Ebla's cities, including the land of Belan. The next king mentioned in the letter is Saumu, who conquered the lands of Raak and Nirim. But King Kundamu of Ebla defeated Mari in the middle of the 25th century BC. The war continued with Ishtar Pizar of Mari conquest of Emar at a time of Eblate weakness in the mid-24th century BC. King Igrish Hallam of Ebla had to pay tribute to Ibluhulil of Mari, who is mentioned in the letter conquering many of Ebla's cities and campaigning in the Burman region. Mari defeated Ebla's ally Nagar in year 7 of the Eblate vizier Ibrahim's term causing the blockage of trade routes between Ebla and southern Mesopotamia via Upper Mesopotamia. The war reached a climax when the Eblate vizier Ibbi Sipish made an alliance with Nagar and Kish to defeat Mari in a battle near Turka. Ebla itself suffered its first destruction a few years after Turka in c. 2300 BC, during the reign of the Marriott king Hidar. According to Alfonso Aki, Hidar was succeeded by Iski Mari whose royal seal was discovered and it depicts battle scenes, causing Aki to suggest that he was responsible for the destruction of Ebla while still a general. Just a decade after Ebla's destruction, Mari itself was destroyed and burned by Saga of Akkad. Michael Astor give the date as a C. 2265 BC. The Third Kingdom Mari was deserted for two generations before being restored by the Akkadian king Manish Yashu. A governor was appointed to govern the city who held the title Shakanaku. Akkad kept direct control over the city which is evident by Naram Sin of Akkad's appointment of two of his daughters to priestly offices in the city. The Shakanaku dynasty The first member of the Shakanaku dynasty on the list is Adidish who was appointed in C. 2266 BC, according to the lists, Ididish ruled for 60 years, and was succeeded by his son making the position hereditary. 
The third Mari followed the second city in terms of general structure. Phase P0 of the old royal palace was replaced by a new palace for the Shakanaku. Another smaller palace was built in the eastern part of the city, and contained royal burials that date to the former periods. The ramparts were rebuilt and strengthened while the embankment was turned into a defensive wall that reached 10 meters in width. The former sacred enclosure was maintained, so was the Temple of Ninhursag. However, the temples of Ninizaza and Ishtarit disappeared, while a new temple called the Temple of Lions was built by the Shakanaku Ishtup Ilum and attached to it was a rectangular terrace that measured 40 by 20 meters for sacrifices. Akkad disintegrated following Sharkali Shari's reign, and Mari gained its independence. But the use of the Shakanaku title continued during the following Third Dynasty of Ur period. A princess of Mari married the son of King Ur Namu of Ur, and Mari was nominally under Ur hegemony. However, the vassalage did not impede the independence of Mari, and Sim Shakanakis used the royal title Lugal in their votive inscriptions. While using the title of Shakanaku in their correspondence with the Ur's court, the dynasty ended for unknown reasons, not long before the establishment of the next dynasty which took place in the second half of the 19th century BC. The Lim dynasty the second millennium BC in the Fertile Crescent was characterized by the expansion of the Amorites, which culminated with them dominating and ruling most of the region, including Mari which in c. 1830 BC, became the seat of the Amorite Lim dynasty under King Yajid Lim. However, the epigraphic and archaeological evidences showed a high degree of continuity between the Shakanaku and the Amorite eras. Yajid Lim was the ruler of Supram before establishing himself in Mari, he entered an alliance with Ila Kabkabu of Ekalatum, but the relations between the two monarchs changed to an open war. The conflict ended with Ila Kabkabu capturing Yajid Lim's heir Yad Unlim and according to a tablet found in Mari, Yajid Lim who survived Ila Kabkabu was killed by his servants. However, in c. 1820 BC Yardun Lim was firmly in control as king of Mari. Yardun Lim started his reign by subduing seven of his rebelling tribal leaders, and rebuilding the walls of Mari and Turka in addition to building a new fort which he named Du Yardun Lim. He then expanded west and claimed to have reached the Mediterranean. However he later had to face a rebellion by the Banu Yamana nomads who were centered at Tuttle, and the rebels were supported by Yamhad's king Sumu Epuh, whose interests were threatened by the recently established alliance between Yardun Lim and Esnana. Yardun Lim defeated the Yamana but an open war with Yamhad was avoided, as the Marriott king became occupied by his rivalry with Shamshi Adad I of Assyria, the son of the late. Kabkabu. The war ended in a defeat for Mari, and Yardun Lim was assassinated in c. 1798 BC by his possible son Sumu Yamam, who himself got assassinated two years after ascending the throne while Shamshi Adad advanced and annexed Mari. The Assyrian era and the Lim restoration Shamshi Adad appointed his son Yasmar Adad on the throne of Mari. The new king married Yad and Lim's daughter, while the rest of the Lim family took refuge in Yamhid and the annexation was officially justified by what Shamshi Adad considered sinful acts on the side of the Lim family. To strengthen his position against his new enemy Yamhad, Shamshi Adad married Yasmar Adad to Betlam, the daughter of Ishi Adad of Katna. However, Yasmar Adad neglected his bride causing a crisis with Katna, and he proved to be an unable leader causing the rage of his father who died in C. 1776 BC, while the armies of Yaram Lim I of Yamhad were advancing in support of Zimri Lim, the heir of the Lim dynasty. As Zimri Lim advanced, a leader of the Banu Simal overthrew Yasmar Adad, opening the road for Zimri Lim who arrived a few months after Yasmar Adad's escape, and married Princess Shibchu the daughter of Yaram Lim I a short time after his enthronement in C. 
1776 BC, Zimri Lim's ascension to the throne with the help of Yaram Lim I affected Mari's status. Zimri Lim referred to Yaram Lim as his father, and the Yamhadite king was able to order Mari as the mediator between Yamhad's main deity Hadad and Zimri Lim, who declared himself a servant of Hadad. Zimri Lim started his reign with a campaign against the Banu Yamuna. He also established alliances with Esnunna and Hammurabi of Babylon, and sent his armies to aid the Babylonians. The new king directed his expansion policy toward the north in the Upper Kabur region, which was named Isda Maraz, where he subjugated the local petty kingdoms in the region such as Urkesh and Talhayum, forcing them into vassalage. The expansion was met by the resistance of Kani Lim, the king of Andarig, whom Zimri Lim defeated, securing the Maria control over the region in c. 1771 BC, and the kingdom prospered as a trading center and entered a period of relative peace. Zimri Lim's greatest heritage was the renovation of the royal palace, which was expanded greatly to contain 275 rooms exquisite artifacts such as the goddess of the vase statue, and a royal archive that contained 25,000 tablets. Mary's alliance with Esnana contributed to its demise, as that city later became an enemy of Hammurabi. The relations with Babylon worsened with a dispute over the city of Hit that consumed much time in negotiations during which a war against Elam involved both kingdoms in c. 1765 BC. Finally, the kingdom was invaded by Hammurabi, who defeated Zimri Lim in battle in c. 1761 BC and ended the Lim dynasty, while Turka became the capital of a rump state named the Kingdom of Hanna. Later periods Mari survived the destruction and rebelled against Babylon in c. 1759 BC, causing Hammurabi to destroy the whole city. However, Mari was allowed to survive as a small village under Babylonian administration, an act that Hammurabi considered merciful. Later, Mari became part of Assyria and was listed among the territories conquered by the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I. Afterward, Mari constantly changed hands between Assyria and Babylon. In the middle of the 11th century BC, Mari became part of Hanna whose king Tukulti Mer took the title king of Mari and rebelled against Assyria, causing the Assyrian king Ashur Bel Kala to attack the city. Mari came firmly under the authority of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, and was assigned in the first half of the 8th century BC to a certain Nergal edge to govern under the authority of King Adad Nereri III. In c. 760 BC, Shamash Risha Usur, an autonomous governor ruling parts of the upper middle Euphrates under the nominal authority of Ashur Dan III, styled himself the governor of the lands of Suhu and Mari, so did his son Ninurta Kuduri Usur. However, by that time, Mari was known to be located in the so-called Land of Lak, making it unlikely that the USUR family actually controlled it, and suggesting that the title was employed out of historical reasons. The city continued as a small settlement until the Hellenistic period before disappearing from records, people, language and government. The founders of the first city may have been Sumerians or more probably East Semitic-speaking people from Turka in the north. I.J. Gelb relates Mari's foundation with the Kish civilization, which was a cultural entity of East Semitic-speaking populations, that stretched from the center of Mesopotamia to Ebla in the western Levant. At its height, the second city was the home of about 40,000 people. This population was East Semitic-speaking one, and used a dialect much similar to the language of Ebla. While the Shakanaku period had an East Semitic Akkadian-speaking population, West Semitic names started to be attested in Mari since the Second Kingdom era, and by the Middle Bronze Age, the West Semitic Amorite tribes became the majority of the pastoral groups in the Middle Euphrates and Kaaba valleys. Amorite names started to be observed in the city towards the end of the Shakanaku period, even among the ruling dynasty members. 
During the Lim era, the population became predominantly Amorite but also included Akkadian named people, and although the Amorite language became the dominant tongue, Akkadian remained the language of writing. The pastoral Amorites in Mari were called the Hanians, a term that indicate nomads in general. Those Hanians were split into the Banu Yamuna and Banu Simal, with the ruling house belonging to the Banu Simal branch. The kingdom was also a home to tribes of Satians who lived in the district of Turka. Mari was an absolute monarchy, with the king controlling every aspect of the administration, helped by the scribes who played the role of administrators. During the Lim era, Mari was divided into four provinces in addition to the capital. The provincial seats were located at Turka, Sagaratam, Kachunan and Tussle. Each province had its own bureaucracy. The government supplied the villages with plows and agricultural equipments. In return for a share in the harvest, kings of Mari the Sumerian king list record a dynasty of six kings from Mari enjoying hegemony between the dynasty of Adab and the dynasty of Kish. The names of the Marriott kings were damaged on the early copies of the list, and those kings were correlated with historical kings that belonged to the second city. However, an undamaged copy of the list that date to the old Babylonian period was discovered in Shubat in Lil, and the names bears no resemblance to any of the historically attested monarchs of the second city, indicating that the compilers of the list had an older and probably a legendary dynasty in mind that predate the second city. The chronological order of the kings from the Second Kingdom era is highly uncertain, nevertheless. It is assumed that the letter of Enadagan lists them in a chronological order. Many of the kings were attested through their own votive objects discovered in the city, and the dates are highly speculative. For the Shakanakas, the lists are incomplete and after Hanundagan who ruled at the end of the Ur era c. 2008 BC, they become full of lacunae. Roughly 13 more Shakanakas succeeded Hanundagan but only few are known with the last known one reigning not too long before the reign of Yajid Lim who founded the Lim dynasty in c. 1830 BC.